everyone, it's Mary and today I'm filming my February wrap up. I've been reading so much in February. Um, I don't know if it's a trend or something, but last year in February, I read a lot too and it was the month I read the most last year. And I don't know if this, this year is gonna be the same because I didn't read, you know, arguably I read a lot because I have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books um, to talk about today, well, one is a DNF actually, but I still feel like it's the, you know, the most uh, reading that I I have done in a month, uh, in a while, especially being February the shortest month of the year. So I'm going to talk about the books from my least favorite to my most favorite, um, as I used to do previously, because I like this format. So first I'm going to talk about the DNF, which was Almost Famous Women by Megan Mayhew Bergman. And I, to be honest, I don't remember how I got this book. Um, I think it was for a book club, but I remember that I was interested in this book preview, previously um, because I had heard this book discussed on booktube possibly, and especially because it had a beautiful cover, which is not this one, um, the sort of draw, I mean, it was, yeah, it was very superficial, but at the same time, I thought it was going to be a non-fiction book about sort of women that were um, sort of forgotten, but also they should have been famous for some reason or, uh, you know, interesting stories about women. But actually, this is a fiction book and it's basically a short story collection about these real life um, women. Um, and the premise, now that I know, um, if I knew uh, that about this book, I would have never purchased it because I don't really enjoy nonfiction that is sort of romanticized, usually. I mean, I'm not saying that I couldn't enjoy a nonfiction book that's about a real person that's also a bit romanticized, where, you know, um, things are made up about, about their life. But I think it's a very delicate thing to uh, approach, and I usually am not satisfied with how um, the author does that. Um, because I feel it can be very sort of superficial and disrespectful. And I think about me, like if I was the person the author was speaking about and they would put in my mouth things that I didn't say or didn't think, it was just, it would be so upsetting. So I don't know if, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't like that. And also I'm not a fan of short story collections usually, but again, I have enjoyed short story collections previously, so. I just thought, since I purchased it, I have it, let's just try and see if it could be for me. But it wasn't. I read a couple of stories from this and it does exactly what I don't like um, <laughs> these books to do. Um, it just, it's very, especially the, sh the stories being so short, it's very uh, surface level. Um, and I guess I felt it was a bit aggressive. Maybe it's a bit of a strong word, but um, in the way in which she described their emotions as if, you know, it was just, I mean, I don't, I felt like she didn't have a lot of information um, in regards to these women. And so when you're making everything up and you're so um, aggressive about their emotions and, and how they felt, like how can, how can you know how they felt? The first story, actually, it's about us um, Siamese twins. Um, here, there are beautiful pictures of each uh, person. Um, or in this in this case people and uh, even the way in which the author approaches disability I don't I don't I, I didn't like it at all um, I felt uncomfortable reading that knowing that the author knowing the perspective I didn't like that so yeah this was a DNF and it's going I'm going to get rid of it then I read Night Flight by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry and I have the Italian uh, version here, so I'm just going to put the English translation here. This book is translated from French. When I read translated books, I usually read them in English anyway, but sometimes I feel like I don't read enough books in my language, in, in Italian, and when the language they're translated from, it's similar to Italian as in French. It's very close to Italian in, in terms of um, sentence structure and words as well so i thought i would pick this one up in italian but i'm not sure this was the right translation because it's sort of an old older translation this book is from the 30s and it was tra the, my translation is from the 80s i felt like the translation had a lot to do with 
how the writing felt very sort of stilted. The book is very rambly as well, but I think this has nothing to do with the translation. Essentially, um, I give this book two stars, but I recognize that it has merits. I recognize that there are sparks of good writing in the book, and I knew picking uh, this book up that it wasn't going to be anything like uh, The Little Prince. I wasn't expecting this book to be that, but I was expecting to like it a bit more, um, to be invested a bit more. It's a very short, I would call it almost a novella, and it's about the first sort of flights um, uh, that happened in the night um, and how hazardous it was. The author obviously draws from personal experience, um, and essentially this story is about this uh, plane that gets lost, basically, for lack of communication because it was, as I said, one of the first night flights. Um, and it talks about the pilot, the um, wife of the pilot, the um, chief uh, of the expedition. It's a, it's a postal service um, plane, but I don't know how to call this expedition, probably. It talks about sacrifice. Um, the heart and the soul and the feelings of um, seemingly very sort of tough people. I appreciate what the author is trying to convey with this book, but ultimately it's not really working for me. Um, I didn't feel it was successful. Um, I think it's this book is saved by these sparks of good writing that I sort of could detect even under this sort of stilted translation. Like, I found this um, I thought this phrase was was nice and then I because I was curious I looked into the English translation it's actually way nicer um, than it is in Italian and I'm gonna read it to you it's they think okay this this is talking about how the plane is um, flying in the night in the sky and he sees the little lights in the in the houses of the people they think these peasants that their lamp shines only for that little table but from 50 miles away someone has felt the summons of their light as though it were a desperate signal from some lonely island flashed by shipwrecked men toward the sea i don't know i thought it was interesting the the thing that um the things that it discussed but it didn't really work for me that much i am still going to keep this one i annotated this and it's also a used uh, copy that I got from, I think for free, um, in one of those like book houses. Um, and also inside there was um, like a paper, a paper cut with the author. <laughs> I thought it was nice. Next up I have another book that I have in Italian, which is The Truth Will Set You Free by Alice Miller. I'm just going to put the English translation again because this book is translated from German, I believe. She's from Switzerland. I think she writes in German. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, this is the third book that I read by this author and I really like the ideas that she presents. She, I concur with everything she says. Um, about she specializes on childhood trauma um, and I guess that all three of her books that I read sort of talk about the same things, about the same themes, so this one probably was less successful than the other two. I still really enjoyed it and I still think it has a lot of value and this one specifically um, focused on violence um, in the household and how that affects children that obviously become violent adults and how violent figures even like famous violent figures such as Hitler or in general criminals um, are tied um, with their childhood trauma basically. The original title also references and also the Italian title reference Eve um, because this book talks a lot about religion too um, and how the church has the power and wants to maintain the power so it doesn't really encourage not to punish and use violence towards children as it should because it doesn't want to lose that power basically. Um, so it talks a little bit of that, she's a bit um, critical towards this stance of, of the church. She also talks about the importance of the acknowledgement of your childhood trauma because forgiveness, as most like psychologists say, it's the, the key to um, to heal from trauma is not enough. While it's um, probably useful to forgive 
who um, hurt you, it's not what sets you free. Um, it's the acknowledgement of what happened, the validation of your feelings, um, someone that tells you you were right in feeling bad about this uh, because this happened to you and it was not fair. Basically, this you know this is putting it in a very simple way. Um, the only thing that I not the only thing, but as I said, I found it a little bit repetitive towards what she already uh, mentioned in the previous books. And also, um, I didn't like that she didn't really reference a lot of things. Like there weren't a lot of footnotes and references. At some point, she's um, she's saying, I read in a paper, and then she proceeds to say what she read, and then you know writes the journalist and. I mean, what paper? What journalist? I, I just, I want to know. Uh, and I'm not sure that she did the same in the previous books. I don't know if I didn't notice, but that's not really ideal when you're, you're, you're um, presenting a book that has research um, mentioned inside. But other than that, I really liked it. I thought it was useful. And I'm just going to keep it in my Alice Miller collection, even though I gave it three stars, so it was just, it was okay. Next, I have a book that I've been talking and mentioning so much on this channel because it's been a year. I've been reading this book for a year. Um, and it's uh, Wild Swans by Jung Chang. Again, I'm holding my Italian translation because I bought this book ages ago. I wasn't even reading in English when I bought this book. Um, but it's originally written in English, even though the author is Chinese. Uh, born and raised, but then she transferred to London um, when she was a young adult. And um, so, yeah, I'm gonna put this down and put the original, well, yeah, the original um, book here. I feel bad, a, a little bit bad about this book, and I'm trying to work on this. Uh, I'm trying to work towards my feelings um, in regards to what other people think and other people's rating. Um, in general, but especially this book is so well loved and everybody gives this book either four or five stars and raves about it and I didn't like it as much. Um, I gave it three stars. I think if I had to rate the stories because, okay, first of all, let's talk about what this book is about. This is a biography of the author, her mother and her grandmother, so three women. It looks at the history of China basically from the 1900s uh, up until, um, I guess, the 80s, probably? 70s. It's so fascinating and interesting and brutal and it was, I was so shocked most of the times in, in what happened to these three women. Um, it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot of things. Um, and it was, you know, for that reason it was super interesting, but I didn't really enjoy the writing style that much. Again, um, it was very full of facts. Um, so. I want to mention that I think the translation also is not that good um, and I I am I'm not very happy about it because I know that I could have read this book in English but I already owned it in Italian so so as far as the use of language maybe some of that I can you know uh, attribute to the bad sort of translation or not ideal translation not really bad but yeah a, a bit stilted I guess um but then I think there was a lot of info dumping, um, a lot of telling, 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 um, and not showing, um, especially in terms of, you know, political things, um, names, some things went over my head and I couldn't really um, hold my attention for that long. So it's possibly my fault, but I felt it was very, the facts were delivered very matter-of-factly and I would have loved a bit more emotions um, discussed even you know of all the the, the people that she talks about even herself um, and the language also was very plain um, and not very descriptive um, and so sometimes I felt like she thought about this and sort of put in a sentence that was a bit more descriptive, but it was so random that I thought it didn't really work. Um, and it sort of underlined the lack of this kind of, of descriptive language uh, throughout the whole book, because she would say, and the sun was um, like kissing the, the leaves or whatever it is, but then, it, you know, it was just a, a phrase um, and the, the rest of the book was not written in that fashion. So I felt it was lacking in that sense. Um, 
So yeah, for that reason it felt a bit dry. I love, I love memoirs uh, and biographies, but this was more historical, I guess, sometimes than personal, even though she obviously talks a lot about her personal life and the life of her mother and it's, it's re really tied to their family. I'm not saying that she talks about the history of China, but I would have loved to know more about them as and their emotions. Um, so I give it three stars. I, I'm not sure I'm going to keep it. Um, it was very interesting. I, I feel like if you have um, recommendations on these on, on, a, on a book like this uh, that talks about and that is set in China, of course, and talks about their the lives of the people. <clears throat> My phone just got home. And also in the in the center of the book, there are pictures which were, were very interesting, and I kept going back to um, to see. So yeah, I don't think I would necessarily recommend it. Then I picked up a manga that again this is part of those books that I picked up when I joined booktube there were lots of booktubers talking about books and they were getting me very pumped in thinking well maybe this book is going to be the best book um, that I read even if it's something that I wouldn't gravitate towards while that can be true for a lot of books um, I don't think you should just pick books based on this uh, fact because most of the times it's not the case as it was with this one which is called Vagabond by Takeiko Inoue and translated I think by Yuji Oniki that's what I found in the blurb um, and it's the story of Miyamoto Musashi who was a real figure um, that really existed he was a samurai and so this is a story this actually is the first three volumes and the series has lots of uh, volumes and unfortunately or now I must say fortunately I couldn't get my hands on the second one it was very expensive I don't know why it's so hard to get um, and also the I don't think that, that most um, of the other volumes are translated so you know I just I just thought well let's just read this and see if it's for me but while I give it three stars, I didn't dislike it, but at the same time, it was not a book that I would have picked up. And I'm not interested in, you know, going on with the series. It's very, sort of, very violent. Um, there's lots of fighting, um, lots of talks of being uh, strong. I don't know. It's not, it's just not my genre. Um, the illustrations, the art, is beautiful. I'm trying not to spoil you. It just really, it was my genre. Um, so yeah, I it was nice to read because it was very quick. Um, it's chunky, but it's a manga, so it really took me uh, nothing to read it. But um, not necessarily. I mean, if it sounds like something you would enjoy, if you love like samurai, samurais and and fighting scenes and everything, then pick it, pick it up. But yeah, not for me, unfortunately. Then onto the four star reads. I really loved these three books. Um, really, really liked them. And the first one is Sugar by Bernice McFadden. This is set in a southern black town in the 50s. And it follows Sugar Lacey. She's a prostitute and she comes to this um, town, this little town. And obviously she comes there to live and she's obviously frowned upon. Um, you know, if you live in a little town or you know anything about little towns, they're very close to communities and they're all, all, also very religious. Um, but she sort of starts a friendship with her neighbor uh, that's an older woman called Pearl. And Pearl has lost her um, little girl 10 years prior. And she sort of, Sugar sort of reminds her of her um, girl um, and that's why she's initially drawn to her even though they're completely different. But it's a very beautiful story about these two women uh, getting together and sort of changing each other um, while they dis disclose their, their own story, basically. Um, I really thought it was, it was well written and I know that there is another um, book in this, I think it's a duology, and I'm, I think I'm going to buy it um, sooner rather than later because I don't want to forget what's happening in this. Hi, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, really. I'm filming a video. Really. It's a camera. I'm filming a video about the books that I read. Say goodbye to the people. Ciao. Mm. Ciao, ciao. <laughs> Next up, I have.
have Normal People by Sally Rooney and I'm finally, I know I'm late to the game, hello 2022, um, but I'm happy to report that I really enjoyed this book and I was a bit hesitant because, I don't know, I felt like I, I don't know, I was afraid it was going to be pretentious and uh, trying to impress, but it, it was not like that at all. Um, I really loved her writing style because it's very, um, simple but at the same time she goes very deep and into the character's psyche and the feelings um, and she's very good at describing relationships. This is basically a love story, fight me on this, um, about Marianne and Connell and it follows them for I think the last year of high school up until college, I think three or four years and it gets a bit frustrating at times because there is that, that like sort of trope that you find in romance, I mean this is not a romance novel, this is not a romance novel but there is that trope that you find in romance novels where people, the characters, the protagonists don't talk to each other and you're like please talk because if you talk then everything is clear but at the same time it didn't really annoy me because if it's a trope it's because it's true. That happens for real. I mean it would be easy and nice if everybody just talked about their feelings, right? Uh, and explained themselves but that doesn't happen most times so I felt it was very real as well. Um, very well written. It took me a while to warm up to the characters, not because they're unlikable, um, because I don't mind, I mean, and they're not even unlikable. They're probably characters that um, I don't necessarily agree on what they're doing, um, although I thought they were still relatable. So I think that's the, the beauty of when you write characters that are different from you, but at the same time you feel for them and you think Okay, that doesn't make sense, but I understand, like, I wouldn't do that, but I understand why you did that. Uh, but in the beginning, I didn't think they were that interesting. It took me a little bit to warm up to them, um, even though it was never boring, like, to follow them. Uh, it was very easy to read and go through. Um, but at some point, I, I was sold, and I thought it was, you know, I thought it was well accomplished. I'm definitely going to read more uh, by her now that I finally broke the ice um, and I really enjoyed this. So yeah, oh, uh, also this is this is a funny thing that is not a spoiler, but um, at some point Connell goes to Prague in, on a trip and I went to Prague too with school, um, it, on a school trip and I felt the exact same things that he felt. I don't, I don't, I don't think it's Prague's fault. Prague is beautiful, um, but he said, um, Nothing Connell did there seemed to stay with him. The whole trip felt like a series of short films, screened only once, and afterwards he had a sense of what they were about, but no exact memories of the plot. He remembers seeing things out of the windows of taxis. So, yeah, I sort of feel a bit similarly towards Prague and my experience, because I don't remember anything. I just remember it was beautiful. But anyway, uh, last... Last books that I'll talk about is A Stitch in Time by Penelope Lively and this is a middle grade book. As I said in a, uh, I think it was a currently reading video, I'm not gravitating towards middle grade books usually, but this is an older middle grade book from, written in the 70s and I feel, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm, I don't, maybe I don't, I don't read enough middle grade books written in recent years to say this, but I feel like older middle grade books and even older YA books were, were less um, sort of protective of children uh, in, in, and they sort of trust the children a bit more to understand even if the language is not as simple or, or the plot is not as rompy. Um, so I think this would be appreciated by any adult, really. Um, it's a very quiet story, very slow, and nothing really happens. Um, I mean, not a lot of things happen and the, the language is very descriptive. So I really appreciate even the writing style of this and I actually, as I said, I don't gravitate towards this kind of this this kind of books but I picked this one up because I knew that there was an element of time travel. If you know me, you know my channel, anything that has time travel in, I'm sold 100% even if it's a show, a movie, 
a book, uh, yeah, I would just read it, watch it. I, I'm in. I don't care what if it's a YA, a middle grade. I'll just, I'm just going to read it because I love time travel as a device, as a plot device. Um, so I was a bit let down because this one doesn't really involve time travel. So if you are picking this book up thinking it involves time travel, forget about it because that's the reason I probably didn't give this book five stars because I was expecting the time travel element. And I mean, arguably, there's something that could... There's some elements that sort of are tied to time travel, but there's no time travel in the, you know, classic, classical sense. So, um... Yeah, but other than, aside from this little thing, I really enjoyed it. It's the story of Maria, she is 11, um, and with her parents, she goes to this Victorian house to spend the summer holidays. Um, she's a very introverted and peculiar child. It's mentioned how she sort of talks to um, objects and animals and they talk back to her, but it's not, it's not a silly thing um, and it's not overdone. Uh, it, I thought it was cute, actually, and very sweet. Um, she's, um, she, as I said, she's introverted, but at the same time, she really is craving for some company as well. And she befriends this um, little, this boy that's living, staying in this hot hotel um, next to the to the Victorian house. But uh, simultaneously, she also gets really uh, involved in the story of the house uh, where she's staying and of, th in particular, this little girl called Harriet that lived you know, previously. Um, she wants to know more about her and the house while she also has her little adventures, I would say, um, her time with the with this boy um, and it's it's a coming of age story too and I loved how it talked about this um, in a very sort of not in your face and obvious it was very subtle uh, this this coming of age element um, because of course it talks about a summer it's not it doesn't span a long period of time but at the same time I really thought it was brilliant how it talked about this and in particular I have this thing that I marked um, about time, it talks about a lot about the t the past, present, and of course the fact that she's growing up too. Um, it says here, um, there are places and they go on forever and ever, and there are people and dinosaurs and things, and they don't. And there are days and months and years and centuries and millions. The fossils are here, and Harriet and me, like beads on a necklace, one after another and yet all at once. I just thought it was beautiful, really. And I, I would definitely recommend this book to anybody, middle grade or older, um, if it sounds like something that you would enjoy. I'm definitely going to check out more by Penelope Lively because I know that she wrote books for adults too. So yeah, um, that's it for today. I was reading another book in February that I could have finished in February, but I didn't because I had too many books to talk about. And so I sort of, <laughs> I finished it in March, but it was this course on colonialism by Aimé Cesar and it was amazing. It was, you know, a five-star read for me, but I'm going to talk about that one in my next wrap up. So thank you all so much for watching. Please comment down below. Um, let's talk about the books that I mentioned and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.